This video is presented to you by Physics for Students. To know more, please visit us at physicsforstudents.com. Dear friends, my name is Tebelina and I'm your host for this podcast, The Saint of Mathematics. Welcome to the third episode. In the last episode, we learned a little bit of technical stuff. What is Poincaré conjecture and all those 3D spaces and terms like homeomorphism? Well, I'm not going to bore you and hammer you with that technical jargon. Let us look back into the year 1990 when our dear friend Perelman was seeking admission to the Steklov Institute. Despite his remarkable achievements at the undergraduate level, he found it difficult to get into the Leningrad Department of Steklov Institute of Mathematics because the institute did not accept Jews following an old policy. In 1990, a letter from Alexander Danilovic Alexandrov to the director of the institute allowed him to pursue his graduate work there. He had already published the results of his thesis, an example of a complete saddle surface in R4 with Gaussian curvature bounded away from zero in 1989. The following year, he defended his thesis, Saddle Surfaces and Euclidean Spaces. With Yuri Barako's efforts, he was invited into the Institut d'Institut Scientifique near Paris by Mikhail Gromov, with whom he worked on Alexandrov's Spaces. In 1992, he published his first major paper, A.D. Alexandrov Spaces with Curvatures Bounded Below, in collaboration with Barago and Gromov. In September of 1992, Perelman came to New York for his internship in the Quran Institute of Mathematical Sciences, working on manifolds with lower bounds on Ritchie curvature. All was set for a great career for him, a distinction from the University of St. Petersburg, and a great start with a job in the state's best mathematical organization. However, in the early 90s, the Soviet Union collapsed. An economic turmoil and political unrest enveloped the entire country. Science and mathematics were the last that one could imagine. Perelman was pleased to be in the United States, the capital of the international mathematics community. He wore the same brown corduroy jacket every day and told friends at NYU that he lived on a diet of bread, cheese and milk. He liked to walk to Brooklyn where he had relatives and could buy traditional Russian brown bread. Some of his colleagues were taken aback by his fingernails which were several inches long. If they grow, why wouldn't I let them grow? He would say when someone asked why he didn't cut them. Once a week, he and a young Chinese mathematician named Gang Tian drove to Princeton to attend a seminar at the Institute of Advanced Study. At one of these lectures, Perelman met Richard Hamilton, a young geometer. The rendezvous was perhaps destined by God to shape up the path which would change the course of the history of mathematics. In some part of our life, we all meet someone who carries a profound influence in our life. We can fall in love or our entire perspective changes. We become revolutionaries 
or we become spiritual. All happens at a specific moment. Moments tied together to form a beautiful garland. Moments entwined together show a new horizon, as Tagore says. Pluck this little flower and take it. Delay not. I fear lest it droop and drop into the dust. I may not find a place in thy garland, but honor it with a touch of pain from thy hand and pluck it. I fear lest the day end before I am aware, and the time of offering go by. Though its color be not deep and its smell be faint, use this flower in thy service and pluck it while there is time. For Perelman, this moment was destined. The moment would change the course of his entire life. He did not know that a young geometer, whose name was Hamilton, would create a profound influence on his life. Was it knowledge, or his smiling face, or Hamilton, the son of a Cincinnati doctor, defied the math profession's nerdy stereotype? Brash and irreverent, he rode horses. Wind served and had a succession of girlfriends. He treated maths as merely one of his life's pleasures. At forty-nine, he was considered a brilliant lecturer, but he had published relatively little beyond a series of seminal articles on the Ricci flow, and he had few graduate students. He received his B.A. in 1963 from Yale University and Ph.D. in 1966 from Princeton University. Robert Gunning supervised his thesis. Hamilton had taught at the University of California, Irvine, University of California, San Diego, Cornell University, and Columbia University. Hamilton's mathematical contributions are primarily in the field of differential geometry, and more specifically, geometric analysis. Perelman had read Hamilton's papers and went to hear him give a talk at the Institute for Advanced Study. Afterward, Perelman shyly spoke to him. "I really wanted to ask him something," Perelman recalled. He was smiling, and he was quite patient. He actually told me a couple of things that he published a few years later. He did not hesitate to tell me. Hamilton's openness and generosity—it really attracted me. I can't say that most mathematicians act like that. I was working on different things, though occasionally I would think about the Ricci flow. Perelman added. You didn't have to be a great mathematician to see that this would be useful for geometrization. I felt I didn't know very much. I kept asking questions. The meeting of Hamilton with Perelman was a crucial one. Yet they exchanged very few words. Something was an inkling in Perelman's mind. Was that Hamilton? His works? His frankness. What was it? Was Providence waiting for something? If your mind dislike anything, obey it. I will forestall their repair hither, and say you are not fit. Not a whit. We defy augury. There is special providence in the fall of a sparrow. If it be now, it is not to come. If it be not to come, it will be now. If it be not now, yet it will come. The readiness is all, since no man of aught he leaves knows what isn't to leave betimes. Let it be. Beautiful lines, aren't they? Can you guess who wrote these lines? Do let me know in the comment section. So that is it. 
I hope you enjoyed listening to this episode of the Saint of Mathematics. I will be back next week with another part of this podcast. Do let me know your feedback and reaction in the comment box, and don't forget to like and subscribe. This is Debrina signing off from Physics for Students. Goodbye and stay happy.